Okay, the name is there in a green box. Last time I also didn't explain too much over this diagram. Why there is a green box here? Uh, you remember when you have to open a file, you have to call FON or I don't know one of the ways, but eventually that open file status is only known by your process. Okay? Only your process know about it. Not other process, just you open a file, okay, the, the uh, let's say you uh, open a file in Chrome, okay, then your game program don't know about that, right? So it's all hidden here, and in the kernel side, kernel side know what a file should open, because eventually it will use uh, some pointer technique to point to the file structure inside the kernel to know that, hey, what is the hardware address? That, that file is stored inside the hard disk, or the, what is your current activity that you are doing. Let's say you have just write some data, okay? It can give you accounting information that how many changes you have done to it, okay? So it is all hidden here, and one more important thing, last time, last, the last chapter, okay? We talked about one thing, is that process, when it called fault, it will inherit the open file that is done by, let's say, process A. Process B is uh, being created by FOC. Then actually we are copying this array, okay? So this array is being copied. But what exactly the meaning of this uh, array is being copied is just copy the array, but don't copy the thing being pointed by the pointer inside the kernel, okay? You can imagine that the kernel as if copy the entire file physically from the hard disk to the kernel memory. You can imagine it that way, but it's actually not the same way, because let's say your uh, file is 10 gigabyte, okay, you get a copy entirely here. There are some necessary information, later on we'll take a look at it, or necessary information about that file. They're being copied here, and it is just a temporary storage, because eventually, all data will be closed. You, you close the file, you close the file, then eventually this data are gone. So I will say that this is temporary storage. And this temporary storage, when, let's say, you have different processes open the same file, then they will point to the same guy. Let's say this purple guy, okay? This purple guy maybe is of the file descriptor number six of process B, but descriptor number three of, of, of process A. Okay, so A and B can point to the same file, but using different file descriptors, it's not a, not a must that, oh, I, I use the same file descriptor, but on different process, you will have different location here. In the kernel, they're just one copy, one copy, okay? So that's why you can imagine that, oh, that, then I understand why this guy tried to write to this file, this guy can see the change. It's because they point to the same copy inside the kernel, and the kernel associates this part of thing inside the harvest. Okay, so this is the sub internal structure. And last time we started with this page, we talked about fopen, okay? So fopen is actually a naughty guy. How naughty it is, this guy will call Marilock behind, your, behind the screen, you don't know this. And it comes out, this is why uh, I, I don't know whether you experienced this, okay? Let's say you have built some uh, data structure, a uh, link list, whatever, but your code is buggy, okay? Buggy in the sense that uh, you corrupt something inside the mail. Then once you call app open, segmentation points. Yeah, I, I don't know whether you have experience or not, because usually it's, it's not that way. <coughs> usually you have app open, then you create your structure. It's the only that you, <coughs> Create a structure and the F open. But I can tell you that F open silently called malloc. So if you corrupt the malloc data, they don't will talk about what is so called malloc data. Once you corrupt it, you call F open segmentation points. Okay? Now, this guy is actually create the structure to store return value free and also many things. Okay? Oh, as, as, a, as a very high level point of view, I just call this guy a create memory. And what is the memory that it's relied on? Okay? So let's take a look piece by piece, okay? We're actually digging into the file structure, what is inside the file structure. So, how many of you don't know about these three guys? Raise your hand. These three guys. Say the ins and outs and the error. You should know, alright? So, 
these three guys are uh, given by uh, standardio.h. Once you input standardio.h, you will have these three guys. Okay? So these three guys are actually of what type? Of what type? Let's take a look at. Huh? Actually, do you know that you we can we can open? Uh, maybe let's pick over right there syntax highlight. We can open standardio.h. Standardio.h. Okay, I open standardio.h. Okay, so you can see many things. Let's say you can see uh, uh, the file structure. Uh, struct file. Is it? No. I have to take a take for a while. A type def. Are should be something related to this guy. I have to search for a while, but don't worry. Yeah. What well, our focus is not this guy. Our focus is standard input. Where are you? Okay. So it is defined here. Uh, extern. Extern means that uh, this file is not the declaration point of this standard in of this that out is that error is not the creation point. It just say that someone have created for you. Okay? But what exactly this struct underscore IO file? Okay? So I will search it. Control C. Right? Yeah, wow, so many, yeah. Wow. So many of them. Oh okay, okay, okay. This line. Okay, so do you know what this line means? Do you know what this line means? This structure course have told you about that depth, right? No? Did you take this structure course? Yes, okay. But this structure course, did anyone tell you about type depth? Uh, just an alias, okay? You can type depth, uh, let's say, double into ha ha, then you have a ha ha, ha ha variable type. But eventually it's double. Okay? Yeah, then this is type def. Type def means a file structure. Okay, this is a file. Actually, its true name is struct underscore IO underscore file. Okay? <coughs> so this standard in, standard out, standard error. Just now we have take a look at the standard IO dot H. You know that they are of the file structure type. Okay? And actually, they are three pointers. So, what are these three pointers? Uh, actually, they are default, really default. Huh? The default file descriptor number zero, number one, number two for every processes, every process. So, there is some sense behind it. Why? Because, uh, well, we want to have those mechanisms. When you call for, every time you will duplicate the first three. There must be first fear. Yeah? You, you don't ever process that uh, without saying is that error, is that out. Uh? So when you duplicate an open file, the 012 file descriptor must be there and being duplicated. Okay? So what is this program is about? Is to dig into the file structure to show you what are the file descriptor number okay, of these three streams. Okay, we call it streams. Uh. Uh, okay. So this is the uh, Code. Okay, this is the code. And I also play around with this. I just uh, create a new uh, file called slash temp slash a.txt uh, using double code w, so it will uh, create it whatever, whenever possible. So you will see uh, the first three numbers, 0, 1, 2, as expected as shown in the PowerPoint. And the last one is three. So just like uh, what happened in the previous uh, last class day, okay? We demonstrate when I open a new file, it's three. The next one is four, next one is five, okay? But zero, one, two is being allocated to standard in, standard out, instead of error, okay? So uh, any question? Any question you want to know more about this, okay? Or you can by yourself look at the standard I.O. .h to see more information. Now, we are going to, to dig deeper inside the standard IO.h. Actually, uh, the specific is a file structure. Uh, before I ask you about file structure, I will ask you one question. Okay? Uh, it depends on how, how many C code or C++ code you have written. Okay? Um, 
his taxi. Okay. Okay, so you can write a program like this, huh? I don't type too many things, I just type the command that I want to ask. How many of you have called this? F flush stand up or F flush stand ever. How many of you have tried? Or never heard of it? How many of never heard of it? Only you try. Okay. Never heard of it? Okay, so never heard of it. So how many of you have heard of it but never called it? Okay, so or you don't care. <laughs> yeah, so there's only one you have called it, so why you call it? Some bug in the output. So that what they mean is that when bug appears, the output don't show up. Is it your your meaning? Kind of. Uh. I try to flush the input. Okay, to flush the flush the output. Are uh, you trying to flush the input? Ah, cool. Uh. Later on, I tell you it's it's not possible. Okay. So uh, what does this mean? Okay, I someone tell me a okay, while I was an undergrad. Someone tell me in my first year of study that yeah, this guy is a kind of a, a flush something to the screen, okay? I try to call it, it seems to be nothing special, right? It's just flush something to the screen, okay? And actually why we ex have this kind of thing exist, okay? Don't treat it lightly. This kind of thing, okay? How many of you have know, heard of Node.js? Node.js only one, okay? Or well, only two. Node.js also a flush. Yeah, it's also asked to yesterday you 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 call the uh, what is that? A child process uh, module and you create a child process, then you need to call F flush. So F flush is a very important concept that you have to master when you try to understand this so called uh, GNUC library. Okay? The GNUC library provides you from very important uh, we call it smoothing out the I/O latency. We call it buffer I/O. Okay, smooth it out. Okay, smooth it out means that uh, let you don't feel that it is very laggy. Okay, and what is the meaning of buffer I/O? So it means that the input and output has a buffer. And what is the buffer is being uh, used? Okay, so uh, I will skip this page first. Later on, I will come back. I want to ask you one question. Okay, the question is. Well, actually, this question uh, should be should be asked earlier. Can you guess what is the implementation of scanf for Can you guess? Yeah. Think about it. How scanf for is being implemented? Yeah. I, I think now by now you have the capability to guess, but maybe you don't have the capability to write. What is that? Scanner presenting has serve, several uh, strange behavior, but we can uh, uh, kind of conclude it in one way. It just keep on reading digits. When it hits a non-digit, it stops. Right? Am I right? OK, so then I ask you this question, why? Because it's highly related. What happened inside, let's say, your scan app is scan the keyboard. OK, now we are going into a deeper level. It means that, let's say there is a uh, secret call called the system call called read. The system call every time gives you one byte. Okay, let's say it's implemented this way. So you have a scanf code, you have a user program, user program called scanf, scanf eventually called read. You are the one who writes scanf. Okay, how can you? I mean, not how can you? How frequent you should call the read or what is the pattern that you call read? Then imagine for a while, you have a stream of things. You don't know whether they're digits, okay? Let's say you have a stream of input like this. Let's say it is one, two, three, and then new line, okay? So then you are the implementer of scanf. Then you will start the call for the first byte. Okay, you ask the keyboard, hey, give me the first byte. Okay, I give you the first byte. Is it a digit? Yes, it's a digit. So you have to save it in some buffer, or because you know that you're computing percent D, 
maybe you put it inside a integer aggregator, aggregating the value, okay? Uh, then you will scan another guy, two, one more guy, three, and keep allocating uh, enough memory. Maybe you put it in the array. Maybe you just keep on uh, doing the computation like uh, you're doing uh, one times ten plus two times ten plus three, so and so forth. You are doing this implementation. But it doesn't matter. You will keep on calling read until when? Until you find the read system call that I didn't tell you about what is a read system call, but believe in me, you can control the read system call to read one byte. Okay? Then the fourth byte that you read is no longer a digit. So what should you do? You have to stop reading, right? And declare that yeah, I found a, I found an integer. I convert it based on this equation. 1 times 10 plus 2 times 10 plus 3, okay? Is it? Yeah, okay. Then you produce 1, 2, 3, and you pass by reference to give the output to the input variable. Now, this is, you can, what you can imagine in your mind how scanf is written. And this is how the scanf code relates to the system call. The system call will ask the keyboard to give you one byte, okay? But it's a matter of that you can have a better implementation. So what's a better implementation? Let's imagine that this call, this byte by byte reading call, is very slow. Let's imagine it's very slow. But the interesting point is, no matter how slow you are, okay, let's say every time you call it, you, you spend one second, okay? But it gives you one character, spend one second, and you can adjust, let's say the, I want 10 character. It's also just one second, okay? Yes, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, you ask your mother for one dollar, it give you, it, it beat you for 10 times, okay? It's asked for one million dollars, also beat you for 10 times, okay? Very interesting point. So every time the penalty is a constant, okay? So why I have, have this uh, uh, kind of fake uh, assumption? Because I want to relay this to a file system. Okay? When it's become a file system, then it makes sense. Because file system, later on I will show you a video. You can see the disk is spinning, okay? And how the disk spin gives you the data. Okay? So let's imagine it this way. So this weak system call is actually it's very interesting that it is not designed for you to read something by by by. It sucks. Okay? Because every time you call it, you pay the penalty. We get an IO wage penalty. So the implementer of the scan app has to do one thing. What is that? To minimize the number of recall. Minimize it. Okay, because every time I call it, I pay a penalty. But the penalty is a constant. Okay? So what should you do? What should you do? You will ask the keyboard, hey, give me one million byte. Okay, give me one million byte. Oh, I am too baby, too uh, crazy, huh? Oh, one thousand byte, okay? Give me one thousand byte. Okay? If so happen that I you don't have 1,000 byte, but you have an enter key there. Okay, I accept it. Because why? Because enter key is is a is a def definition or by definition of our of our habit that it's the end of my input. Okay. So you have to type in enter until until you enter you don't read anything, right? So even though you don't have 1,000 byte, okay, I accept it. So we have two conditions, huh? Either I will tell the which system call that, hey, either you encounter this guy or you have 1,000 byte. All right? So what should you do in if we change the implementation this way to in order to spend less penalty in the which system call, okay, now you have to think together with me. If I have to change the implementation in this way, then there is no so happy implementation that yeah uh, the first number I get is one, okay. Then the next number I get is two, so I get times ten and plus two. No, you cannot do this slowly. How can you implement it? You need a buffer. You need a buffer. Put everything in a buffer first, okay. Put everything in a buffer first. Then what should you do next? After there are data in buffer, you start to process the buffer. Now I give you one more example, and that example will totally change the game. The example is, 
Your fire has become blue. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, very dangerous. Huh? Another example totally changed the game. The example is, again, it's about implementation of scanf. You imagine how to implement it. The input is a space. And then new line. And I use this code once, call it once. What is the output? One, two, three, yeah? right? But what is the next output? If I follow this program, I have one loop, right? Then you will go to four, five, six. If it's normal scan F. Now, how to implement it? That's why I said it's totally change the game. Because I cannot say that oh, uh, all things in the buffer will become one number. This is wrong. If I read it into my buffer, now my buffer becomes something like this. Okay? And you cannot say that the entire buffer can convert into a number. Only partial data here can give me a number. Oh, I include the space because the space is actually a delimiter, okay, to stop my scan. All right? So if we follow this way, then you will kind of understand, hey, actually the scan effort is really hard to implement. And one more thing, this buffer plays some tricks. If I order this guy, this resystem system call, okay, to get this bunch of data into my uh, library called scanf, can I throw this away, 456? You cannot throw it away, okay? So what is the magic moment here is, after you consume this guy, you erase it and make this become a spot of my pro of my buffer and next time there is a guy called scanf again what should you do you don't call with some call but go to the buffer get 456 understand what i mean there is a buffer there is a buffer silently sitting inside the scanf code and that buffer is actually because of the penalty that the risk system forgive you. If the risk system don't have any penalty, yeah, th th I don't care. I just do it by my by reading, okay? But it so happened that this guy has a penalty. I cannot do by 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 reading. I have to suck up all the data available in the keyboard and put in my scan F code. And scan F code know that oh, there is a possibility that I have two numbers here. When I consume once, I have to still hold this. This is what we call buffer I.O. And what is the meaning of the buffer I.O. eventually? It's not about print F, not about scan F, but about efficiency. We want to reduce the number of risk of call. Okay? Or you can just keep on looping and calling risk of call by by by. And what is the risk of call here? The risk of call is look like this. That's why I, I explain the risk of call down. Uh, it is just a very uh, boring call. Uh, it asks you for file descriptor. It's not a file structure, okay? And the file descriptor is 0, 1, 2, then it will become an instant input, instant output, instant error. Then what is the uh, generic pointer buffer? It's just a piece of RAM, okay? You create it by malloc or you create it as an array, okay? And pass it in and ask the system for a exact amount of bytes. Then it will give you the exact amount of bytes. Okay? The counterpart is write. Okay? Write is a write to the screen, write to the file. Okay? It depends on which file descriptor you're talking about. If you write to stand out, then you write to the screen. If you write to the file descriptor point to a file that I just opened, then you write to the file. And this is what we call the direct I.O. Okay? without any buffer directly touching the device, okay, or the, directly touching the kernel, okay. It's what direct I.O., this is direct I.O. And the buffer I.O. that I just explained to you is all be implemented already in scanf, fscanf, get chart, fgsc, get sf, get sf, read, fwrite, all kinds of things that you have heard of 
in previous old courses uh, from C about C plus plus, even in Java, C sharp, they are all implementing buffer I/O. None of this has any exceptions, okay? Because no one will call system call so boring. Huh? So you will have a buffer, and where is the buffer is hidden? I just explained to you there is a very important concept of buffer. And I just tell you that the buffer will be used by the scanner code. And now, by looking at this diagram, you will understand that, hey, the data flow is some raw data input. I don't know how many. I just asked the uh, system call that, hey, give me as, as much as possible until I hit the enter key. Put it inside the scan app, and actually there is a buffer that is created by the file itself, okay? By the file file um, structure itself. So the scan app doesn't hold any memory, <coughs> but actually it's inside the stream itself, okay? Then after you process the uh, the data, then you feed it back to the user program that is written by you, and next time you call it, then it will depends on. Yeah, we can go to this example now. Okay, this is an even easy example because it's only one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, once you get one digit, okay, actually in your program you will call the scan F six times, right? You're calling it six times because every time it gives you a number, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. But as a matter of fact, because this one line input, okay, is having one line, huh? So the scan F always asks us wisdom for that, hey, give me up something up to a new line character. So it will just call it once, suck up all six numbers together with the space and the new line, put it inside a buffer organized by the uh, file structure, okay? And when the scanner starts to consume, it will, ah, I find one, so I erase one. Okay, actually I'm moving the buffer and move the buffer so that I will erase one, then keep it there. Next time someone calls scan up again, I will return two directly from the memory inside here. So this is the game. This is the game. Understand what I mean? Okay? So if you understand this game, then actually you will understand that this is a dangerous game. So what is the meaning of dangerous game? What if there is a control, just like uh, our classmate just tell me, okay? He wants to flush the standard input, okay? What if I can flush the standard input? If I just pick up one number and flush the standard input, two, three, four, five, six, or God, okay? So usually, um, standard input is not be, cannot be controlled, then you can flush it, okay? Now, I, will want, I want to explain an other point of view of buffer I.O. This buffer I.O. point of view is from input side. Input there is a buffer, and the buffer is to reduce the number of bridge system call, okay? And of course there is a counterpart. The counterpart is write system call. You call printf, you will eventually call write system call. And there is also a buffer to reduce the number of write system call, because write system call also have penalty. But before I show you the, the, uh, the, the things here, the things here is not attractive anymore, okay, because it's all on words, I will show you a program, okay? The program is very interesting. Okay, so the program is here. Uh, it's called something here. Uh, you, you don't need to understand what this here. Later on I will explain to you what is this here, okay? What I'm doing, I'm doing this. Print app, H and then slip one, E and then slip one. So eventually you will see H E L L O new line. Right? Okay. What if I write such a program? Okay, I copy and paste. Copy. Ah yeah. I type a wrong hook here. Okay. Uh, control C, okay, control V, good. So what if I write this program like this? Just something here, and actually the last slip I keep it there. Return zero. Did you try? 
did you try to produce such animation like things? Okay. Uh, this is the code. Uh, big test. Eh? Hey? Oh, yeah, I forgot to include standard library. Okay, good. Make. Oi, what happened now? Generation of. Ah, oh, yeah, it's no, no, sorry, it's not stand, standard library, it's stand, Unix standard. Ah, good. Okay, the code, the execution. How many of you think that it's normal? How many of you think that it's normal? Huh? Where are they? Now what if I do this? Okay. What if I do this? I just select some point. I don't want to type all of them. Okay. I'll select one more point. Okay. Compound. No problem. So the code is here. Hmm. What can you say about this? It seems that we are being <coughs> ah, this is a disaster. <coughs> we have been cheated for so many years. Maybe you have already learned about C for many years. Maybe two, maybe one, but no one tells about this. <coughs> it seems that there are two special control. Okay, one control is a new line character. The new line character is a bad guy. <coughs> is it a bad guy? The previous version that I typed, okay, is only have a new line character here and just all the sleep. Without the new line character, can you see the output? Let's see. Again. Oh yeah, I'm wrong. Okay, I should remove all of them. Huh? Sorry. Uh, remove them. Okay, maybe I I just remove the last one. Okay. I want to demonstrate. Actually, the output just flush out is because of the new line character. Okay. H, E, L, and then wait for new line, new line pop up, then thing pop up. So you're being cheated. One problem, what is the new line character? It's still like here, it seems to be so special. And one more, what exactly F flush stand out? Now we understand. It means that it's kind of a negation of our of our the control of the new line character. The new line character control when to show things out. F flush is to break this control. Okay? Now show you one more. Okay? Show you one more example. This example is I every year I love to show this and every year some people will just show me the I yeah why you tell me this earlier? Why don't you tell me earlier? Okay? Now this is something that you will commit every year is segmentation faults, okay? Uh, do you know that there is an effective way to generate segmentation faults? Okay, so this is the effective way to generate segmentation faults. Ah, no one had any feeling about this code? I have a null pointer and he references a null pointer of what segmentation faults, right? Now imagine that this is your bug, okay? And you find a bug there. You find a bug inside a program, so you, you start to use printf to debug. It's normal, right? So I, I say that, oh, debug message one. Okay? And after this, debug message two. What will you see? What will you see? You will see debug message one, but no debug message two, right? 
Now this is usually what you are doing. Huh? Okay, test. Okay, okay, test. Big test. Run. Nothing. Nothing. Totally zero. Okay. Yeah, there is many people complaining. That, oh, why you don't don't tell me earlier? Okay. Usually you will embed the message like this. And what's wrong with the program? Is this application for so powerful that it can embrace something before it? No. It's because you don't know C. New line. Make test. Run. Okay, so that's why when I teach EOS students, I always tell them, yeah, it do like, it do like, it do like, and then keep that happen. Okay, I find many people don't like, don't like this happen. What's wrong with the new line here? That they are so lovely, yeah? It's happy to debug. Huh? Now I will explain what happened. I will explain what happened. It's totally because of this cycle. So what is this cycle? This cycle when we replace the read system call to write system call. Okay. This cycle I already explained to you uh, just just here, okay? I just uh, make it become some words, okay, for you to revise. Now, it's about the writing part now. What is the meaning of the writing part? The writing part, actually, in every program, not just C, okay? C++, Java, uh, Python, all behave like this because they are all being controlled by the C library. All Java, Java JVM is implemented in C, right? Uh, Python VM also implemented in C. So they were controlled by this file structure as well as the buffer I.O. Now, what is the buffer I.O. here? We have three modes for output, okay? The first mode is called fully buffered. What is fully buffered? It means that inside the file stream structure, there is a, you know, very big buffer, and you can keep on writing that buffer. Okay, so I, I'm talking about the right part. Huh? You can keep on writing on this buffer until two events. First event is you use up the buffer space, then it will flush to the, the device. The device will be the screen, maybe the files, or you terminate the program. Then it will flush to the device. Uh, I mean, terminate normally. Second is called light buffer, which is PNF. PNF is light buffer. PNF light buffer means that there is two events to trigger the real writes. The first event is hidden, is a program termination. Okay. Second is new line character. Once it see new line character, it will write to the device. So it's called light buffer. And the last one is no buffer or unbuffer. That means every time you write it, it will flush to the screen or flush to the device. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this program. No buffer. So, this is the call to control which kind of output buffer that we want. Uh, later on, I will show you the, the menu page. Don't worry. You don't have to remember it. Okay? So, let's see what happens if I call this program. No buffer. Okay, it won't wait for the new line character, okay, and it will write to the screen directly. Next program, line buffer. Okay, so this is the default. You have seen this. You have seen this. Let's see. Line buffer. Yeah, it's this is nothing until you show the new line character, see for one more second, and stop. Last Full buffer. Okay. So the full buffer mode, uh, I just change some parameter and make it in a full buffer mode. Full buffer mode. Nothing. Totally nothing. Until when? Until program termination. Okay. It just pop up. Okay. Without any delay after the new line. Okay. Even though the new line appear, it won't flush the screen until it terminate the program. Okay. 
Now, this is something happening in all languages, okay? Even in Node.js, when you write Node.js, it's all behaved like this. So uh, if you have tried, okay, you can take a look at Node.js menu. There is a flush, flush the screen, okay? It said it's flush the screen. Uh, so this is flush the screen, flush the device, okay? Now, this is buffer I.O. Why there is a buffer I.O. exists in the first place? Okay, uh, this is the call, this is the call. And this is the demonstration I just showed. Why is appear in the first place? Now, before we understand why it appear in the first place, let's try to understand what happened now. This program I showed you last time, right? Now, can you explain why? I give you some, some time for you to discuss, okay? Oh, by the way, I didn't explain to you uh, all this buffer mode, okay? All this buffer mode, where are the printf goes to? It goes to an internal buffer in your memory. The memory is associated with the malloc call that is hidden inside fopen. When you call fopen, there is a malloc. Actually, the malloc is associated with this all kinds of input buffer, output buffer. So this is a piece of memory owned by your process. Okay, it's a piece of memory owned by your process. Now, with this knowledge, can you explain why this program behaves strange? Do you remember this program? No. Fortoxy. So what will you expect? Normally, you will expect that, ah, I have one hollow, and then two in line. But this is abnormal. Two hollow. One, and then two. Okay, you don't like this, okay? You, you don't like this output. Okay. Then make the output uh, beautiful. Okay. And make the output beautiful. Huh? Alright, what? Wow. <laughs> eh? Why there so so many p here? My my keyboard sucks. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Too hollow. Why this program give us too hollow? Now you are kind of capable to explain. Because the buffer is copied as well. Yeah, and it is still in the memory. Yeah, it's still in the memory. Not flush the screen. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Now let's try to understand what happened so you flush to the screen and create two hello okay <coughs> so this is it I can even make it more funny more funny like uh, yeah I love this okay PID okay then big for head for ah, sorry yeah say what should you what should you say okay now you understand there's two lines. Are the two lines giving you two different PIDs or not? <laughs> same or different? Who think is same? Yeah, be, be confident, huh? Mm. Who think is different? Let's do it. Same. Because because what? The string. That is, get PID will convert the number into a string. That string is keep in the memory before you call fork. Okay? Yeah. Interesting, huh? I mean, I mean, this is not interesting. If it's happened during your job, okay? When you have a job, you use fork, okay? I don't think that there is no no job in Hong Kong is using C. I know many jobs in Hong Kong using C, okay? And they just use a prefrag, they use a fork, okay? And then when you come into this problem, I am quite certain that you cannot pass your probation. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting, huh? Now, what what is the so important about this? Okay. I don't put down this graph. Okay. I actually have some graphs in some years before. Let's see whether I can find it out. 
okay? Or maybe I have a break, uh, let's have a break, and after the break, I will find out some uh, data that I measure why we need buffer IO, okay? And after this, uh, we will go back Okay, so let's continue. What is the next question that I want to discuss to you based on file system? Let me ask you these questions. Do you know what is empty file? Can you explain what is empty file? Hmm? What is the meaning of an empty file? Do you know what is empty file, first of all? What is the definition of empty file? Yeah, just guess. <laughs> you don't you don't say I don't know, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, then everybody asks, asks you what is the what is the analogy, the analogy. What is the meaning of you don't have any money in your wallet? Then that is you have a wallet but you don't have any money, right? What is empty file? You have a file but it is empty. How many bytes? Zero bytes, right? Then I will ask you this question. Have you heard of NO file? EOF. Have you heard of? Where is EOF? Someone tell me this. I find that this is totally nonsense. They tell me this. Ah, if if you uh, start reading a file, you will eventually read a character called EOF. Then that is the end of the reading cycle, and you should stop the program. Yeah, the problem is. Read and read a character called EOF. So let me ask you this question. If you believe in this, then tell me whether empty file is an empty file. Yeah, you have an empty file. That means it's zero bytes. But you will read EOF there. Then whether empty is empty. Yeah, philosophic question, huh? <laughs> empty is empty. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting, huh? If someone asks you in this during some interviews, okay, ah, oh, what what do you think of an empty file, okay? And what is EOF? That oh. it's maintained by the file system. No, not maintained by the file system. <laughs> it's kind of close. Someone plays tricks, okay? Now, first of all, let's differentiate what is the truth, what is not the truth. The truth is. Empty file is empty, okay? You cannot say that there is a, I, I, I don't have any money, but there, actually there is a money called no money. No, there's no, not, no, no things like that, okay? So, empty file is empty. Okay? You should ask the next question. What is EOF then? Why people tell me that when I read data, I will hit EOF? It seems to be wrong. It means that I have four bytes of data. I have a fifth byte, right? And take a look at this program. Put think that this program has a bug. I think no one think this program has a bug, right? It's totally normal that I have a counter. I keep on a reading get chart to count how many data, right? How many bytes I have read. I've read in the program, and when I hit EOF, then I stop the program, I break, then I say that EOF, I encounter EOF, then I have so many bytes. Now, this is normal way to count how many bytes you have read, and you will not include EOF, right? But why you get EOF? Okay, so first of all, let you have a look. Uh, this program works perfectly, yeah? So it's waiting for me to input a, a stream of data, but I don't want to have a stream of data because you cannot verify how many bytes you enter. So I will do this, redirect a C file into it. Okay. So that means that I will allow this F uh, get char underscore UF program to read the content here and report how many bytes of this EOF dot C. So this is a 221 byte, is it? Okay, so it's matched, it's matched. So my calculation is perfect. What is the problem? The problem is about UF itself. About UF itself. What exactly is UF? Now, I tell you one more thing. If I change the program in this way, 
Look what is this way. I don't use library call anymore. I directly call system call. Directly call system call, what's the meaning? Uh, I can explain to you. Uh, read system call, what's your target? You should resolve the file descriptor of standard input. So this file descriptor of standard input. And what does this two combine? It means that I want to update the variable C, and the variable C is only one byte large. Okay, char is one byte. Right? Char is one byte. So it's one byte large. So it will only take up one byte. And if the return value is zero, that means I don't have any more bytes to read. Okay? Then I should stop. I should stop. Now, if I use system call, that means that I'm reading raw data, right? It's no longer something that gets charged with. So let me make a bold assumption. In the raw data, I can find UF. Okay? This is my bold assumption. In the raw data part, if I use system call to read it, I will eventually get UF. So while I hit the return zero, return zero, return zero means nothing now. Okay, the return value of read is nothing. And other than nothing, it will return one. Okay, because it's successfully read one part. Okay, so I will say whoa. Then I find UF from the raw data side. Okay. Let's see it, huh? Uh, cat read new f dot c. So there's the same program. I have the wall here. Okay. If I found c equal to u f, then I will say wall. Come on. Nothing. Huh? I just type 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 type, and then press Control T to end the stream. Can you see any wall? No. One more try. We direct a file. Okay? Now one one time is for is from a keyboard, another time is from a file. You cannot see any file here. It means UF is doesn't exist even though you read it in a raw sense. Okay? Now what exactly is UF? What is this line? This line I copied it from standard IO.h. Okay? So you can verify here, uh, user uh, stand IO dot H. Okay, so let's look up EOF. What can you say? Define EOF minus one. EOF is just a number, not a character. It's being defined, and now I tell you what exactly EOF is, and also what is the call F EOF. Okay, how many of you have tried to call it F EOF? Right? You should, you should. No one tell you ah, you don't read file. Okay? If you read file, then how many you know that you read until the end? You're not not using F EOF. It depends on return value. Okay, so forget about it. So what is EOF? EOF is just a flag. It's a flag. Get char, find out that I don't have anything to read. Return you a flag, UF, which is equal to minus one. Okay? And for those, uh, this is not file language, huh? uh, it's a uh, fog, okay? It's F scan F, F print F, uh, F push C, F get C, okay? All kinds of this kind of file system related system call, a uh, library call. They will also memorize whether they hit the end of the stream. If it's hit the end of the stream, because it has a man of structure, the structure already remember that I hit the end, so it will return EOF minus one to you. So EOF doesn't exist in any piece of data. Okay? Don't tell people that you now you have to adjust a bit. Don't tell people that. Oh, wow, you read, 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 then you read your F there, and that means that you hit the end of the file. No, change the tone, okay? While you read, 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 and then the call return minus one. Yeah, it's not your F. The call return minus one, return your F as a indicator that the end of file is rich. So it's just flat. Now, after this, don't tell people that, yeah, there is a your F, okay? I, I kind of do this, okay? Uh, 
some years, okay, in the final exam paper, I keep on asking the question. Okay, the question is, does EOF exist in a file? Still, some people will say yes. Okay. Yeah, but remember, all those kind of thing, even the EOF is a lie. Okay. They just remember something and directly return you the result. So that's why I hate using this guy. FUF is not useful. It just remember the status. Okay? I want to verify something. I can use other ways. I can depend on the return value of FCNF. <coughs> FCNF tell me that, oh, I cannot return anything useful, then I can stop. But I never use this. I, of course, I go through some painful debugging, okay, uh, during the first first two years of study. I find that this is a kind of bad guy, okay? So I go into uh, take some take some details, okay, and find that oh actually EOF is just a lie, okay? So make sure that every file don't have EOF. Huh? Alright. So uh, we still have time, huh? Any question about EOF and the buffer IO? Get they a kind of a I cannot say deep topic, but some topic that corrects your concept, okay? Your concept was wrong, now I correct it. Now, it's something that about some facts, okay? What is the relationship between file and directory? Yeah, it seems to be a, yeah, you were talking about something that a secondary school would talk. No, of course I'm from the kernel layer of a very low layer point of view. What is the relationship between these two guys? And after this, you will understand one problem. I asked you last lecture. I asked you, where is the file name store in the hard disk? Huh? Can you open a file and find out the file name inside the data part? You cannot find it. Where is it? It's actually hidden in one place, the record. Okay, the directory is actually a very important storage. First of all, what is what we call the attributes of the files? Okay, there are some attributes, and all the attributes is actually stored in a files. Oh, no, sorry, 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 it's not file. It's inside a directory. Okay, so the attributes usually include at least the name. The name must be unique within that directory, okay, you already understand this, but it can be uh, not unique across different directories. The size of the file, uh, the creation time, access time, modification time, okay, but some people think that these three times are bad guys, okay, so what, why they are bad? Uh, modification is not a bad guy, okay, without modification time you don't know which version is earlier, which version is latest, okay. So you need modification time. Creation time uh, is kind of a way to, I, I can verify that whether you copy it from your friend or not or that, okay. Uh, you give me a file but the creation time is kind of problematic. Access time is something that people don't want, okay. So what is the meaning of access time? Do you have any idea what is access time? No one. No one, no, no one understand or no one try. How many of you is, is using Mac? Someone, huh? Okay. So you can sort your desktop based on different criteria. I choose to sort by date last open. What is that? No. Days modify is easy to understand, right? Because uh, I changed content, okay? Then it will sort earlier, right? Uh, you can sort by the creation time. That means that you download the file, okay? When you download the file, you create a file. Then that means the older guys will be kept later. What is the option that I chose? Is the access time. Once I access the file, it will sort to an earlier place. Let's try. I have some interesting icon so this is a, a, a screenshot once i open it you will see it suddenly pop up to here <laughs> open okay so this is a i love this you seldom, you seldom get this right like github has a problem okay it's under maintenance so i capture this okay <laughs> yeah but when you open it that means that you assess the file okay it suddenly moved to here because I ordered 
the desktop icons based on the access time. Okay, and access time, then you can see Mac OS has access time. Uh, even Windows has access time. Uh, Linux also has access time. But access time is actually stored in the directory. So whenever you change the access time, that means you open a file, you just read it. You have to update the hard disk. It's very, very slow, make your entire system slow, and also damage your hard disk. Right? You keep on, whenever you open something, you change the hard disk content. It's just a four bytes data, okay? Eight byte, eight byte data for the time, okay? Then you you take so many modification and hurt the hard disk. So some people consider that access time should not be updated in some high-end system. High-end system means that they, they ask for a high performance, okay? Uh, this too may not as exist in some file system, like uh, your SD card. Your SD card don't have ownership and permission, okay? And not those send this, send this as, a, as some utility to encrypt it. It's not about that, okay? It's about a raw file system itself, okay? It's don't have any permission or ownership, but NDFS has, right? You have NDFS, I don't know whether you have tried, okay? Uh, why I ask this question? Because uh, whenever you buy a new Windows, okay, you are the only owner, right? You never share your computer to other people. Except I know, okay, because I was a whole dealer, okay? I know that people will use other people's computer when they play AOE, play LOL, play games on, on the network, okay, I know, okay? But uh, yeah, after that moment, you don't share your computer with others, so you never change your ownership as far as permission in your file system. But when you use Linux, when you use Mac, you will usually do this, okay? So this is uh, not very useful in NDFS, but uh, based, on, based on our experience. But very useful in extent for extent uh, extend for uh, two before are just different versions. Uh, also, uh, the HFS plus. Okay, so this bunch of things is actually an array of information, and this array of information creates the directory. Okay, so when you take a look at this, uh, and this is just a screenshot for your for your reference. There is a command called SDAT in Linux and also in Mac to display all the statistics that you can obtain by right click. Okay, right click on the file and you see some details. Actually, there's a command for this and also system call. Okay, STAT system call. Then you can read whether a uh, file exists or not. Okay, so what are the commands that you can update attributes? Now, after this, after this slide, from this slide onwards, there's no point of return. I won't accept any late submission anymore because I will teach you how to change a file timestamps. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first command, huh? you want to change the name, no problem. MV, move it, okay? Move to the name. So once you move, okay, one of the data being changed is directory, right? The directory contains your file name, it will change. Uh, the system call side, yes, will be name system call. Size, too many tools. Uh, once you open the editor, you save it, then you change the size, okay? Uh, the right system call. And uh, what is a truncate system call? Truncate system call is a beautiful system call. Let me show you how beautiful it is. Okay? First, I need a Linux. And how big is my Linux? Ah, I still have some space. Okay, good. Open a new tip. All right. So truncate, truncate is actually a command as well as a system call. They behave similarly. So uh, I need to specify the options. I can't remember all things. I, wow, so big, huh? Ah, okay, okay, I see it. So truncate allows you to set the size of a file. Okay, so let's imagine that I create a file here in, in this directory, okay? I want to create a file called, um, uh, just, just, just the test.txt, okay? I remove it first. 
Okay, I create it using touch. So after touch this, it will be zero bytes. Truncate is a super power call. It allows you to set this file to whatever size you want. I want to set it to be this size, 10,000 bytes, ls minus l, test us. I want to set it to be What will happen? Guess what will happen? My computer will put explode. What now of this space? How many here? Oh, one K, one Mac, one G, ten G. Three more zeros. Yeah, too large. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have so much space, okay? I don't have space, okay? But if I have space, maybe it's possible. I mean, we try one zero fewer. Oh, good. <coughs> yeah, how many? How big it is? K, Mac, G, one T. <laughs> but I don't have one T, okay? Uh, well, don't worry, don't worry. Actually, this from K core is a false claim, okay? It allows you to grow, but actually, it just a uh, whole hold of this space, kind of reserve it for you. But when others files want, it will give the other files the chance to use that, okay? So I don't know whether you have tried, okay? Uh, let me ask you for the experience. If you have experience creating VMs, okay, there is a question. The question asks you whether you want to grow to this size now or later. How many of you have seen this option? You create a VM, it will ask you this question. Usually it will ask, you want to grow to this size now or grow to this size later. Now, this is the case that you grow to this size later. This size is claim that is for you, okay? But take a look at my this usage. Yeah, my this size is 7.1 G, and I still have 56% left. Then, <coughs> what happened to this test stock say? It's a false claim, okay? So this is from K, from K system call, very powerful, okay? But don't call this from K system call or something related in on Windows, okay? I don't know what will happen, okay? Yeah, Windows sucks, up. don't try. So, uh, this is Uh Permission? Uh, permission, you already heard of uh, using change mode, but I don't know whether you know it or not. Change mode has a system call. You can write a program to change mode, because there's a system call. Change on. How many of you have called change on before? No one, huh? So only you, uh, change on. What is change on? Change the ownership of a file from one guy to another. But usually it's controlled by roots. Only roots can call change on. Okay? You cannot say that, ah, there is a file owned by roots, okay? I changed its ownership to me. Yeah, no, it's cannot, okay? It's usually done by roots. One more. Yeah, this is something that you, you want, okay? Touch. Touch is a program, okay, you see I just create a create an empty file using touch, right? And actually touch is not just allows you to create empty file, but allows you to modify access time, modification time, as well as creation time. Do you want me to show you how to change timestamp? Okay. Let's remove this guy. Let me touch this. Touch test doc no problem. Take a look at the timestamp. Okay, so it's today, current time. Now I can, I actually I can remember options. Okay, uh, how can I? Oh yeah, minus T. 
using a timestamp in this format instead of current time. <laughs> Which date do you want? It's a M M T E H H M L. Okay. Let's say uh, I touch this file uh, minus T month uh, zero one date zero one zero 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 zero. So that is uh, this year January first. Okay. Let's try something more exotic. The year 2000. Yeah, that's the way to change it. Okay. So from this lecture on, well, I don't, I don't believe any any found in the same Okay. It's good. Oh, yeah, I just in my in my heart is okay. No problem. You can take a look at the timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is how you can change it. Okay, so it's a touch. And if you want to have a program, let's say you have a batch of files that you want to update the timestamp, you can call the system call uTime. Okay, uTime system call allows you to update the timestamps. Okay, then you can write the program and update it in the batch. Okay, so this is about the attributes. And attributes, actually, I mentioned it more than one time. It's actually is an array of files, you know, of directly is array of files, and array of files actually contain a block of attributes, another block of attributes, and eventually you will see something like this. So a block of attributes form a directory entry, we call it D I L E N D directory entry, and another block of attributes form a directory entry. So it is just an array. Okay? Directory is an array. And next lecture, we will talk about the important point. Next lecture means the, the week. Uh, the next, next week, we have a makeup class, OK? We talk about one very important point, kernel cache. So what is kernel cache? The kernel cache is the source of all evil. Why you need shutdown sequence? Why you have to eject a USB drive, click it, and then you pull it out? It's because of this, what we call, kernel offer cache or kernel cache. Okay? So let's stop here uh, because I, if I want to continue, it's take many times. <laughs>